In this video, we're going to learn about power that's dissipated in resistors. So first of all, why do we care about power in resistors? You know, how is this relevant outside of a, an electrical engineering course? Well, power, a resistor is a general model for a physical thing that takes electrical energy and turns it, or electrical power, and turns it into something else. So in the case of, for example, a speaker, uh, this is or can be modeled as a resistor. So it takes electrical energy in and converts that into acoustic energy or pressure waves. Uh, a light bulb is a resistor. It takes electrical energy and converts it into visible light that you can see. Uh, a heater on or your stove is a resistor. It takes electrical energy if you have an electric stove. It takes electrical energy and converts it into heat. And so all of these, in all of these cases, what matters is the amount of power that is entering or leaving our system because that relates to how loud something is going to be or how bright it is or how hot it gets. So how do we actually find the amount of power lost in a resistor and how do we relate it to the things that we do know? Well, power is nothing but, or the power dissipated in a resistor is just the energy lost in that resistor per unit time. And so what we need to figure out is the amount of energy that our resistor loses in some amount of time and then divide the two. So how do we find the energy lost in a resistor? Well, this will actually turn out to be the same for pretty much any circuit element. But let's say that we have a resistor and it's got a certain amount of current flowing through it I and it's also got a certain voltage drop across it V and let's say that the resistance value is R. So the energy lost, so we know that current is just made up of a bunch of little charged particles. So each of them let's say has a charge Q. Now most of the time these are going to be electrons but in practice in they, or in principle, they could be anything. They could be positively charged particles. Um, and we know that each of these particles has, as it goes from the top of the resistor to the bottom of resistor, its energy lost, energy lost is equal to Q times V. So let's say that these were positively charged particles. At the top of the resistor, they have a very large energy, and as they pass through the resistor, they lose that energy, and the amount of energy, energy that they lose is always equal to Q times V. Now this is the energy lost of a single particle as we go from the top of the resistor to the bottom of resistor, but if we want to know the energy lost per time, or the power lost in this resistor, then that's the energy of a single particle. So energy of a single particle multiplied by the number of particles that pass through the resistor per unit time. And so if we just plug stuff in, we've got Q times V times the number of particles per unit time. But the number of particles per unit times per unit time multiplied by the charge of each particle, so all of this, this is just equal to oh, this is just equal to the current. And so the power lost in a resistor, but really any element, is equal to the voltage across that element times the current passing through it. And now this expression will always work. Um, this is always the power dissipated, but usually we only know one thing. So usually we only know the voltage or we only know the current. But fortunately, for a resistor, we can use Ohm's law to simplify this expression. And Ohm's law, remember, just says that the voltage across a resistor is equal to the current through the resistor times the resistance. And so if we plug in, so power is equal to the voltage times the current. If we plug in, say that we know the current, we can plug in the value for V and we get that the power is equal to I squared 
times the resistance. Or suppose that we knew we can rearrange this to solve for the current, and we know that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, or the power is equal to the voltage squared divided by the resistance. And so both of these expressions will work to find the power. It's just that sometimes you know the current, sometimes you know the voltage, and so sometimes one might be more useful than the other. So let's do an example. Let's say that you have a voltage source, or a battery if you like, and that's connected to a resistor. And let's say that the resistor's value is one ohm, and we're applying two volts across it. How much power is dissipated in this circuit? Well, we can use our expression that we calculated here in terms of the voltage, that the power is equal to V squared divided by R. Now V is just two volts, so we take two volts and square it, and then divide by the resistance, which is one ohm. So this is four volts squared divided by ohm. And now I have, this is sort of a weird, awkward unit. I happen to know that volts squared per ohm is the unit of power, or this is equal to four watts. And so the watt is the standard unit of power that we use. It's a joule per second. Now maybe you don't have the resistance, but you have a current. So let's say we've got three amps of current flowing through a, oh, I don't know, a two ohm resistor. Then we can use our equation in terms of the current instead of the voltage, or the power is equal to the current squared times the resistance. And so our current is three amps, so three amps squared times our resistance is two ohms, ohms. And so this ends up being, what is this? Uh, nine amps squared times two ohms or 18 watts. So amp squared times ohms is another awkward unit. It's the same as volt squared divided by ohms, which is just a watt. So the power dissipated in this resistor is 18 watts. Now, if you happen to forget the formula in terms of voltage or current, you can always go back to the most general formula, which is that power is equal to voltage times current. So if you know the current through the resistor or you can figure it out and you know the voltage across the resistor or you can figure it out, you can always, always use this equation to figure out the power dissipated in a resistor. Things get a little more complicated when, we're, when stuff changes with time. And in that case, this is what's known as the instantaneous, instantaneous power. So it's the power dissipated at any given instant in, if the voltage and current are functions of time. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.